the word. Please be upstanding. Da kwa wa linga na na Yesu. service in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I say welcome. This morning we look at a theme which is entitled The Church, a Family to Belong. The Church, a Family to Belong. And we have read three portions of scripture from John, the Acts of the Apostles, and from First Peter. The family we are looking at this morning is the family, and I shall use the word family and church interchangeably. In other words, I can use one or the other, but they shall mean the same thing. But a quick definition of family is that a family is a group of people that live together or come together and have something in common. A group of people that live together or come together because they have something in common. So it is the commonality of something that brings these people together. We have seen people who are bound together because of their hobbies. Probably they are soccer fans or they're engaged in a certain activity, and that activity is what brings them together 
And so we can, in a way, call that a family. And although they are not biologically uh, related, they are related because of that activity that brings them together. Therefore, we can say today that a family can either be made by you being born into the family or by you being adopted or grafted into this group which we call a family. We have read three scriptures and I shall raise three points out of these scriptures as we go through each one of them. In John chapter 17, we read about how Jesus prays for the believers. Remember, this is a time when Jesus now was about to be crucified and therefore he was now praying for himself. He was praying for the disciples whom he was going to leave behind. But more so, he was also praying for those that would come after the disciples. He was saying that let the disciples, once the disciples have reached out and shared the word of God, there will be those who will be converted or those who are going to believe and agree in God. And it was these people that he was praying for, especially when you look at chapter, or rather verse 20 to verse 26, he is praying for them. Now, I would like to raise a few things that he was praying for at that particular time. Firstly, Christ says that these people who were going to be part of the family were going to, not going to be of the world because they were going to be different. Whilst they were living in the world, they would not be of the world. And why, I asked myself the question, why would Christ say they would be of the world, they would be in the world, but not of the world? And it brought me to the first point, which I raise in John chapter 17. And I'm saying that, you see, every family has got values that identify them. Every family has got values that identify them. Now, values are those things that define us. They are the things that make us who we are. They are the things that tell us what is important, what is right, what is wrong in life. We are a people that are very interested in families. And it's for that reason that normally, if you want to marry or get married, we ask the family, what kind of family? Why? Because we want to know their values. We want to know what does this family believe in? What makes up this family? Because there will be families we will avoid to go into because of what they believe in and because of what makes them. But Christ in John chapter 17 raises certain things. He says, let this family of believers that are going to come be of one spirit. In other words, they should be one. Just as the Father and him were one, so he prays, let this value of oneness, this value of unity be part of this family that was going to come. Next, he also says that this family that is going to come should not be an ordinary family. It should be a family that was going to be clothed or covered in glory. Because he said the glory that Christ had gotten from his father, he was also passing that glory to the family that was going to come. Those that were going to be part of the family or the church were going to be clothed in that glory. And glory is a value. Then he also said, let them be made perfect. Making being made perfect because we are people who are full of imperfections. 
were a people who are always and make doing wrong. We are not people who are right all the time. But Christ prays that within this family, let there be a value of perfection among them. That they may be perfect, they may be upright in their standing. They may be a people that are going to know that to do that which is right for them. But also finally, though not the least, he prays that let these people be covered or be ever in his presence. Now, you see, when you are in the presence of someone, it is the presence of that person that influences you. Parents, as we bring up our children, what they become usually is because of how we have influenced them in their growth. And similarly, Christ is saying that this people or this family which was going to take after him needed to be covered with his presence or to ever move in his presence so that they may take their likeness after him. Hallelujah. So to emphasize, the first point is that every family has values. And these are the things that determine how they live, how they relate, and their way of life. In, in Peter, the book of Peter, we see how the writer gives an assurance to those who were believers about who they were. Remember, the church at this particular time was going through a time of persecution. And as they went through this time of persecution, I'm sure there were times when they began to doubt who they were, whether they, the decision that they had made to become Christians or to be part of the church, to be part of the family of God was correct for them. And therefore, at this particular time, the writer now in First Peter chapter 2 is writing to them to assure them that they were a people who were unique. They were a people who were God's own special people, that they may not doubt who they were despite that which was happening around them. And the point I would like to raise from here, which is the second point, is that, you see, every family has an identity. Every family has an identity. And the family that you belong to is what gives you who you are. It gives you the identity. If you are born as a child of a king, then you are a prince or a princess. That is what gives you the identity. And regardless of what happens, that identity cannot be taken away from you. And here, I'm talking about a family giving you identity. And please do not mix identity with status, because status can be acquired. We can acquire status, but we cannot acquire our family identity. When we talk about, for instance, a president, a president, that's his status. Presidency becomes his status. But what has given him the identity or given that person the identity is where they, they come from, the family which they come from, because that is their identity. And therefore, when we come together in the body of Christ, we must realize who we are, that we are a chosen generation, we are a royal priesthood, that we are a holy nation. Because we have been born into the family of God, we have been grafted into the family of God, and that gives us our identity. Hallelujah. From John chapter, sorry, Acts chapter 2, we see the growth of the church at Jerusalem. This was a time when Peter was, had just given, uh, had just preached 
to the crowds in Jerusalem after they had received the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit had come upon them and now Peter had stood up and preached to the crowd and there were many who were able to give their lives to Christ. The Bible records that almost 3,000 gave their lives to Christ at that particular time after the preaching of Peter. And afterwards, they began to live a particular lifestyle. They began to follow certain things which defined them in their life. And so what I would like to bring out is that in this scripture, I raise my third point, which is that you see, everyone in the family has a role to play. Everyone in the family has a role to play. The church at Jerusalem, each person found a role to play because they needed to be able to perform certain functions. I want to believe that when we look at that scripture in Acts, when they say they came and fellowshiped, certain activities took place during that time of fellowship. Sharing of the word probably, praying together, and things like that. And even when it came to the breaking of bread, because the scripture tells us that as they fellowshiped and prayed, they broke bread together. Even in that, certain things basically happened and each person had a particular function in which or which they performed. Then more so, I would like to also bring out that when they met, they looked out for each other. They shared what they had. And it is in this sharing that they met the needs of one another. The point here is that everyone had a role to play. And that's what family is about. It is for that reason that you will find that there are certain things in a family you can do and certain things you can't do. We also see this even in our families. For a certain activity, they will say, no, let us wait for that one to come. Then we can do this. Because they know that when this person comes, he's the one who is able to do certain or work in that activity. When others try to do it, they'll tell them, no, you can't do this. Let this one do it. Why? Because in each family, we have capabilities. In each family, we have abilities. And so it's up to you and me that even as we are grafted into the church, into the family of God, where do we fit in? Which is our role in this family? of God. In conclusion, I would like to say that the theme, the church, a family to belong, we can perceive it from two directions. Firstly, is that there are those who are already in the family of God. You and I have chosen, we are here and I believe that even as we sit here today, we are a people who have chosen the life of Christ and because of that, we are in the family of God. And our being in the family of God, now it is entirely up to us to be able to say, how shall I fit in? Or what is my role in this family of God? How am I bringing out the values that Christ spoke about of oneness, of glory, being glorified, of walking in his presence, it is entirely up to us. Then the other aspect is that there are those who are also desiring to be part of the family of God. 
we are already there but there are also those who are desiring to be part as it was in the book of acts where because of the lifestyle that these people led the scripture records that numbers kept being added to them every day why because they saw they found comfort the world out there needs a place to run to the world out there is hurting where can they find peace where can they find healing it is in the family and in the church of god but it is up to you and me to live a life that is going to bring them to be part of this church or family of god that's the challenge i leave you today how are you fitting in god's family how are you fitting in what as a member fitting in as a member of the family but also fitting in as someone who is going to let others be attracted to come and be part of this family that's the challenge i leave with you today god bless you and amen shall we pray father we thank you for your grace that it is ever sufficient for us lord we pray that let it be our desire today that even as we who have chosen to be a royal priesthood a holy nation god's own people that as we live a life in the church it be a life that is going to minister to the world that the world may turn their hearts to god in due season father i pray that lord let this word which has been spoken today find fertile ground that it in due season it may bring forth fruit in each of our lives through christ our lord we pray amen